This is Vernon in California, where the population is just 255. Can you imagine that this area was once a paradise with lush vegetation, stunning orange groves and orchards brimming with the finest fruit trees? Now the city is almost entirely made up of warehouses and factories. Food service manufacturing, metalworks, production of glass and plastic equipment, the city's businesses employ roughly 46,000 direct and 54,000 indirect primarily skilled workers. How did this land undergo such a drastic change? That was the result of a conspiracy. A conspiracy? Yes. Here's how a business conspiracy seriously impacted California's smallest community. 1870s. It was then a small group of farmers, including Civil War hero Captain George R. Vernon, inhabited the region in and around modern day Vernon. Both Vernon Dale and Vernon were names for the unincorporated rural farming zone that is today largely known as South Los Angeles. It was a land of pear, palm and lemon groves in addition to magnolias. In the Vernon neighborhood, orchards, gardens and berry patches were planted out until it nearly became one enormous garden. Crops like corn and alfalfa thrived in the loamy soil. Living in Vernon's cottages and farmhouses, middle and upper class residents considered their way of life as the antidote to the nearby Los Angeles urban Wild West vibe. 1890s A group of Vernon inhabitants expressed their aspiration for their small town in a letter. The nearness of Vernon to Los Angeles, the fertile soil, the beautiful orange groves, the orchards containing every variety of the choicest fruit trees, the character and social standing of the incoming people, together with the rapid growth of our district during the past year, seem to indicate that in the near future, Vernon will be filled with beautiful residences, the homes of those who like beauty, quietness, and the many advantages derived from being in a productive vicinity and among a deserving people. Vernon residents once described their town as a land of churches, shoemakers, chemists, and endless orchards. Residents described themselves as happy people, rejoicing at churches and schools. Vernon served as a metaphor for the prosperity and moderation of Southern California for many. But things were getting bad. There were a lot of Chinese farmers in the region and their conflicts with white and Californian residents, especially over water rights, were frequently exacerbated by prejudice. Residents of Vernon felt that their pastoral ideal was in danger of disappearing as early as 1889 due to the threat posed by Los Angeles' explosive growth in the 1880s. They were doomed to lose the battle, and they lost it fast. Vernon was split into east and west, and developers had started to suburbanize huge land masses. Los Angeles annexed a large portion of West Vernon, engulfing it within the rapidly growing metropolis. The conspiracy begins. John B. Leonis, a businessman and merchant from the Basque country, arrives in the region. Miguel Leonis, known as King of the Calabasas, was Leonis's legendary from whom he had learned many tricks. As his uncle had done in Calabasas, John B. Leonis intended to dominate Vernon. He did not see the landscape of ranches or the farmlands, but instead he oversaw a modern industrial city. He gradually started acquiring land in what remained of the East Vernon farming area. 1900s By 1903, the ambitions of Leonis and his associates were known to reporters and Los Angeles municipal authorities. A journalist for the Los Angeles Times lamented the destruction of Vernon's lovely farms. All of this is now passing away, the irrigation water has been shut off, and the last of the old orchards and gardens are falling into the hands of the ruthless subdivider. In order to install short tracks into Vernon off the main downtown Los Angeles lines, Leonis struck a deal with the railroads as part of plans for a racetrack. On September the 16th, 1905, Vernon's remaining residents cast ballots to become a city. 62 people voted in favor of incorporation and four against. The incorporation, according to the papers, was stated to be for manufacturing purposes. The success for incorporation was enormous, despite the fact that outside opposition campaigned valiantly to stop the proposal and that cars and livery rigs combed the town's borders in search of voters to oppose the incorporation scheme. Unsurprisingly, Leonis and James Furlong, Leonis's right-hand man, were appointed to the Board of Trustees, which would govern the industrial hamlet for decades. The irrigation water was turned off, and the very few remaining old orchards and gardens were being taken over by the ruthless subdivider. Vernon underwent incredible rapid change. All activities in the city were governed by Leonis, William Stevens, Furlong, and his brother Tom. 
All they wanted to do was make a hell of a lot of money. Leonis capitalized on Vernon's reputation and set to turn it into the Southern California region for athletic events. The city's founders promoted Vernon as a sporting town in 1907 on property that they leased from Leonis. He inspired businessman Jack Doyle to start an outdoor boxing ring, the Vernon Avenue area, which swiftly rose to prominence in America. The minor league Vernon Tigers began playing in their own specifically constructed baseball park in 1909 after Leonis successfully lured the Pacific Coast Baseball League to Vernon. Also, there was a scandalous country club where dancing females courted the attention of city men. With the help of the city's founders, Leonis developed an attraction that included a 100-foot-long bar with 37 bartenders, a baseball stadium with 7,000 seats, and a 7,000-seat boxing arena. While East Coast manufacturers came to Vernon for heavyweight matches, Leonis persuaded many of them to set up West Coast Industries there. Oil refineries, butcheries, and stockyards began to spring up around the city. In addition to the vehicle wheel factory, there were beef processing facilities, paper mills, and ironworks. And the masterminds, President James Furlong, city clerk Uncle Tom Furlong, and trustee John B. Leonis. 1920s In many ways, Vernon became America's first industrial park. It was a bustling manufacturing hub. As a result, a constant stream of veteran inhabitants moved away from Vernon in search of warmer climates. There were 300 industrial plants, 20,000 workers, and just 140 registered voters in the city in 1929, giving them essentially the power to control who lives in the town, and consequently, who votes in the town, which they ensure is essentially exclusively made up of city employees, as in, people who are paid by the people seeking their votes. And if you believe that this is just another tale of retro corruption, you need to reconsider. Actually, it's also a tale of very modern corruption. When John B. Leonis died, his land was handed to his grandson, Leonis Malberg, who served as Vernon's mayor for 35 years. The proud tradition of being the worst continued. He ruled and ruled. 20 years. The elections weren't competitive for more than 20 years. In 2006, a group of individuals attempted to relocate to Vernon in order to run in local elections. When the city learned of their plans, they attempted to have them evicted and cut off their power. Wasn't that a brilliant and inventive electoral strategy that makes you wonder if it's legal? Charges were filed against Vernon's mayor, Leonis Malberg, his wife, his son, and the former municipal administrator on November the 15th, 2006, as a result of the investigation into alleged public corruption in the city. On the basis of claims that the former municipal administrator, Bruce Malcolm Horse Sr., had misused public monies for personal gain, the Los Angeles District Attorney's Office opened an inquiry in April 2005. The governing family, it was claimed, attempted to keep new inhabitants out and their inquiry revealed evidence into voter fraud on their part. Although residing in wealthy Hancock Park in Los Angeles, 50-year-old Mayor Leonis Malberg misrepresented his residence, claiming it was a modest apartment in the 2800 block of his Leonis Boulevard, which bears his grandfather's name. Voter fraud, aiding ineligible voters, fake registration, and perjury. These were among the accusations leveled against the Malbergs. Malcolm Horst Sr. was accused of stealing $60,000 from the city and using it for his own benefit. He was charged with 18 counts of misappropriation of public monies. He received a $600,000 annual salary from the city. He received a pension of $499,678.84. In 2000, in 2010, Malkinhurst reportedly obtained the highest pension of any of the 9,111 retired public employees in California, receiving pensions from CalPERS totaling $510,000 a year plus health benefits. Malkinhurst retired in 2005. Once corruption in the city's government was exposed, Vernon considered the option of disincorporation. Legislation to dissolve the city's incorporation was being explored in 2011. Vernon would have been the third incorporated community to be dissolved in the last 40 years, following Cabazon in 1972 and Hornitis in 1973 had this gone into force. Currently, Vernon is nearly entirely made up of factories, warehouses and other businesses that are served by the numerous trains that pass through it and close to it. It's possible that smaller governments can be more democratic at times. In Vernon though, that is definitely not how things have turned out.
The purpose of cities was not to serve as a source of income for city officials. The reputation of the small town, which is nevertheless regarded as the most business-friendly city in the nation, has been tarnished by rumours of corruption and ties to organised crime.